Who am I to complain of your absence on my eye? Can I ask where are you when I should ask where am I? Who am I to complain on your absence on my eye? Can I ask where are you when I should ask where am I? Who am I to let tears come anywhere near my eye when my sins outnumber the number of days that pass by? Who am I to pretend that your absence tortures me? Were I to look into your eyes, my eyes would fall shy. When my sins make my master weep every Thursday night. While meanwhile these same sins make me do nothing but sigh. I watch the world burn and I have one of two choices. I can cry or I can cry and use the tears that I cry. I can cry or I can cry and use the tears that I cry. I can be the lover who weeps at his lover's absence or I can be he who refuses a last goodbye. I can sit in a room and say yes, I'm waiting or to prepare the ground for your return I can try. I can love you but love alone is not enough. I can love you but love alone is not enough. When you act because you love then you can hold your head high. I can say I'm waiting or I can actually prepare so I can speak to you with a tongue of truth and not lie so I can obey your orders like the best of companions and not reply to every order with the question why. So I can see that you are you when you reappear or else come back at your service long after I die. Who am I to call out your name every Friday morning and pretend to get upset when you don't reply? Who am I to call out, where are you? I'm ready. I'm waiting for you, but maybe you're waiting for me. I'm waiting for you, but maybe you're waiting for me. For the hastening of the reappearance of our beloved 12th Imam, can I please get a loud salawat? أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى بيته الطيبين الطاهرين I would like to thank the many organizations involved in this wonderful program especially the Ahl Bayt Center of Toledo for giving me the absolute honor and privilege to stand here before you for the first time and perform these minor words of poetry I hope inshallah you can benefit just as I benefit from your presence and this wonderful community that I've seen so far. Today, inshallah, we are going to hear from Al Ain, uh, the respected uh, Sayyid, uh, Sayyid Sahib is here uh, to tell us about the wonderful work that they're doing. And of course, I'm sure all of us have been to, given the honor and opportunity to visit the blessed lands of Iraq and do the ziyar of the shrines. I myself have been given the honor more times than I can count. But I think. One place that I want to take you today is beyond the golden domes and beautiful shrines of our Imams. When you go into the slums that surround the shrines, when you see the true poverty there, the widows and the orphans, it really breaks your heart. And as we know, Iraq is a country that has been torn apart by war for, for over a decade and by a tyrannical regime before that is a country that has truly been destroyed. And it's a country where wherever a husband or a father is taken away, the family unit just collapses. And you see mothers who are struggling to look after their children, gathering scraps of food from wherever they can, money from wherever they can, living in huts, living in houses, places that we wouldn't dare step into, let alone live in. I'll never forget hearing one mother uh, tell us that she is taking her daughter out of school for the reason that she cannot afford the $15 a week to send her there. The travel money, which is $15 a week. That $15 for us is nothing. It's a cup of coffee or something that we spend on without even thinking. But because of that $15 a week, that child's future is taken away from them. And hearing that truly broke my heart. And I hope that all of us, inshallah, myself included, can do what we can to protect the orphans of Iraq. There are many fantastic organizations doing work, especially Al Ain. And I've had the privilege of going there many times and working with many organizations, one of them being Al Ain as well, going to their office in Baghdad and seeing that the fantastic work that they're doing. And I want to take you on a journey 
which was based on a true interaction I had with a young orphan girl in Karbala. Close your eyes if you need to, lower your head and come with me on this journey, but focus as much as you can on the words. We're departing the center of Karbala where the beautiful shrines are and heading out into the, out of the main city. We, down, we drive down a desert road and take a left turn into the slums. There's rubbish everywhere, poverty everywhere. It's not a place you'd walk in, let alone live in. And you go into a house, a makeshift house. There is a mother there and her daughter. They've lost their father, but they're still courageous. They're still keeping that patience. They're refusing to be labeled as poor people. And you ask the little girl, this young, very smart young girl, what happened to your father? Tell us a story. She looks at you and she says, Dad never came home and I wasn't sure why. I was confused. With my eyes still warm from the kiss that he left me just the other night. I can't sleep tonight though because I hear mum cry. He had a job to do, she'd tell me. I kind of understood why, but I didn't really understand why. I know that he had to travel far away to protect us from some bad guys, but now my insides hurt because he said he's coming back and I can't believe he lied. My eyelids are alive to the tears I've cried. Dad, are you coming back? Because they're telling me that you died. Baba has to go, he'd tell me. There are some bad people that want to do us harm. He told me real tight, his loving hands stroking my palms. I refuse to live in humiliation, he would say. So we've taken to arms. They're hijacking our religion and they're pretending to know our prophet. There's nothing prophetic about their evil and I will not stand for it. No one else is going to stand up and defend the world against them. The world's against us again and we're stood firm against them. He kissed me goodbye right there on the neck. He left a piece of himself there, just a tiny little speck. The spectacles, his spectacles almost hanging off his nose. A spectacle awaits him and it's almost as if he knows. I remember those trips to Arabi. He'd never buy me anything cheap. Wherever I want to go, wherever I wanted to go, he'd take me. He'd always bring me back gifts to keep. He'd tuck me into bed every night before I'd sleep. His hands would dry my tears if ever I would weep. Whenever I loved something, I'd come back home and find it waiting for me in my bedroom. The exception is my dad. I keep loving him, but I'd never find him there. It was a few days later, I heard my mum crying. The sun sat differently in the sky that day. Instead of burning strongly, amongst the clouds it lay. My father, whose soul is but a peace of mind, didn't return from the front line this time, and it's not giving me peace of mind, and I've never known dad to not be on time, and there's a fine line between knowing something's wrong and everything being fine. I knew something was wrong. It could be nothing, but I'm tormented by my mind. Is it shaitan, or is it logic that's telling me it's all a sign that dad isn't coming back home this time? My mother came into our room, my mother came into our room, not holding back the tears. She couldn't hold it in any longer. Her heart is disheveled as she appears. The way her voice was trembling, I hope the angel of death can hear. I can't describe the fear that grappled my little heart. Ya Allah, the fear. She scared me the way she wept. I was just as scared of what she would say. Just as scarred as I was then is how I am scarred today. My love, she said, he is no longer with us. I'm sorry it has to be this way. Your father isn't coming back this time, my love. He's been taken away. Mom, what do you mean? I answered. Did Daesh capture him today? It's okay, mom. He'll be safe. We just need to kneel down and pray. No, no, you don't understand, my love. Your father isn't coming back. He left the battle, but his friend was left behind and he wanted to have his brothers back. So he head back and he turned his back on everything he had and he never came back. They found his body. They found his body. Your father is dead, my love. Your father is dead and he, he isn't coming back. It took me a long time to accept it. I expected everything except it. I expected the world to topple on its head, but not for my dad to not be home whenever I come home for the rest of my life. Be strong, my mom says, once she wipes away all those tears. 
It's time for us to band together. Life won't be easy from here. From here on, no dove nor heron. We'll fly above our house, a house like a head without hair on. We'll be without food because we have no breadwinner. That's just the way this country is. A widow is a bread loser. We'll have to move, we'll have to move out into a hut because we can't afford this rent. But love it like your home, my love. Alhamdulillah, it's better than a tent or better than no place at all. Just like tea and a bit of bread is better than no food at all. Like walking an hour to school is better than no school at all. Like water that isn't clean is better than no water at all. And like having no father now is better, like, better than never having had a father in your life at all. If I could do anything in this world, it would be to turn back the turn of the earth and hope that time would reverse and my father would be here and I tell him not to go. He died for something great. I know that doesn't change the fact though that whenever I think about him, my tears like rivers flow. So hold your dad close and don't ever upset him. Kiss those hands that build day and night just so you can sleep comfortably in peace with no worries or fears that he'll ever let you go because the time you spend with your dad you'll never get it back once he leaves this world some dads die of old age some dads die when we're young and some dads are taken from us leaving our households broken and struggling so take care of us orphans because my dad my dad died for something great my dad my dad was something great my dad, my dad was something great for the safety and love and future of all our blessed orphans. Can I please get three loud salawats? I'd like to reiterate, inshallah, that as you've, I'm sure many of you have seen the stands when you came in, these orphans have nothing in life. They have no one to help him but us. There's an amazing hadith from Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, where he says, and it's a hadith I've never forgotten when I first heard it. He says, Allah has placed the wealth of the poor in the hands of the rich. And subhanAllah, here we are blessed to have so much and we should take it as our responsibility to look after these orphans because whenever I go into a house and I've worked with many, many organizations there who are doing fantastic work helping these orphans whenever I see these orphans who are just like our own kids I think that kid there could be a future artist he could be a future doctor a future teacher a future scientist a future movie director he could be anything but unfortunately he doesn't have the same opportunities that we have so inshallah each of us can do what we can and uh, help the orphans and I'm sure uh, Sayyid Sahib will tell you more about Al-Ainam. You can see the stands in the front, inshallah, to see how you can help. I want to end with a few lines of poetry about Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam because as we all know, the beautiful hadith uh, from the Holy Prophet, Dhikra Ali on Ibadah, the remembrance of Ali is worship. So inshallah, we can all participate in the rewards. But I want, I understand the program just started, we're just getting into it, but I feel like the salawat are still very, very quiet. And I, I, as I said before, I'm very pleased to see the wonderful akhlaq of this community, but I feel like your salawat might need a bit of work. So I'm going to give you a chance to prove me wrong. I want three loud salawats in the love of Ali ibn Abi Talib, and I want them to be so loud that people can hear you in Najaf al-Ashraf, inshallah. Salla ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Well done guys, you proved me wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr, wa ma adraka ma laylatul qadr, very the Quran descended on the night of qadr, and what do you know about the night of qadr and about Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam? I say verily, he descended on the 13th of Rajab. And what do you really know of the striker of Marhab? I don't know what was just born, a baby or God's book, 
all I know is that when he was born, the idols shook. Did Ibrahim build the Kaaba to be your cradle? Did God give Muhammad arms so Ali he'd cradle? I don't know if as a baby you would walk or crawl, for I can't imagine crawling the father of all. Envious of this day is the night of destiny, as it sees that the Quran your pupils carry. How great is he that when he is born, the idols shake. If he'd return to his cradle, when idols he'd break. The man bought to stand against the thousands of Hunain, the mountain of Uhud upon Muhammad's plain. It was him who taught me God when he was struck prostrate. He gave his killer water before meeting his fate. They could only kill Ali within his prostration. Not surprising when he was born in prayer's direction. They tell me I call Ali God. They tell me I call Ali God. But how can that be when it is God that I thank for guiding me to Ali? When it is God that I thank for guiding me to Ali. Thank you for listening. Wassalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Aflahamu salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Thank you.